Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy back again with another blast from the past with a look at a 16-bit side-scrolling shoot-em-up that I've been playing quite a bit recently. Because any game where on the back of the box it says, if it ain't been shot, shoot it, will always get my attention. Even though it never saw light of day in the tea-drinking, apples and pears, go bless your mom, pal territories. So I've been playing the beer guzzling, stars and stripes, all-American apple pie genesis version. Now this game is based on an anthropomorphic independent comic from the late 1980s that was trying to piggyback on the success of those heroes in a half shell, the Ninja Turtles, which saw every wannabe artist and publisher try to replicate the formula used by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, from Usagi Yojimbo, Bucky O'Hare to Zatoichi Walrus. The racks of comic book stores in the late 80s and early 90s was a real menagerie of animal themed action comics. Tom Mason's Dinosaurs for Hire didn't last very long, but wound up at Malibu Comics, a publisher with big ambitions of rivaling industry super heavyweights Marvel and DC by pushing their Ultraverse line with Saturday morning cartoons and of course video games, in which they found a kindred spirit with Sega of America, who in trying to rival Nintendo often took chances on lesser known characters such as Shakan the Forever Man another independent comic series, and also Malibu Comics stablemates The X-Mutants, another 16-bit Sega exclusive which somehow found its way across the pond to European shores on a raft made of buffalo wings and sheer force of will. Dinosaurs for Hire the concept may be a complete rip-off of the Turtles, but if the Saki swilling Domo Arigato Mr. Roboto Bushido Code Japanese studio Konami could create some of the most fondly remembered games of the era based on licensed properties, then this largely unknown to mainstream gamers cult comic book had potential to find an audience. I mean the story is of gun-toting dinosaurs working as mercenaries and fighting ninjas for flip's sake. What we got however is a painfully generic Contra clown with a lot of little annoyances that soon add up to joypad chewing frustration. That sewer level can get fucked. But it wasn't enough to make me stop playing. Scowl and swear through clenched teeth, yes, but I persevered and that's the trick to games like this. And it really is a fact in whether you will play it once and think it's not for you, or you will learn the enemy patterns and throw yourself once more back into the breach. Because the difficulty is what truly defines this game. And I'm not talking Mega Man precision platforming or Metroid exploration difficulty. I'm talking everything on screen and off screen trying to kill you by fair means or foul. I mean, what bloody killed me there for Christ's sake? Now besides your main gun you also have a close range attack that can be a punch or a whip of your tail and seems to employ real to life small brained dinosaur logic as there can often be a delay from pressing the button to anything happening on screen as the command bounces around your character's empty head while ninjas look to insert shuriken into your Jurassic Park. Overall, Dinosaurs for Hire never rises above being a formulaic assembly line platform shoot 'em up, but it's not the worst offender on the Mega Drive and can be fun in two player mode, as you get the choice of three playable dinos. So give it a blast before consigning it to extinction. So this has been Console Tronics. Thank you for watching. Lots more videos coming your way very soon. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Laters.